Well, you know, you don't always have to paint on watercolor paper. What? Yep, it's true. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Today we're going to paint on watercolor canvas. Now, I've been asked about this before, um, the Frederick's canvas specifically, and I have some, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I've never really liked it, and I uh, have painted on other non-absorbent surfaces, like uh, Ampersand's Aqua Board, which I kind of like that one, and Yupo. Uh, Yupo is kind of stands alone in a category by itself, and we'll probably do an episode on Yupo sometime. But uh, watercolor canvas is it's just using, you know, regular kind of prime canvas, but with a watercolor absorbent ground. Hobby Lobby had all of their canvases 50% off, and they specifically have their own watercolor canvas. And I want to tell you just right up front, I really like it. Uh, decided to experiment with it, and this video is going to be a demonstration about that. So I'm not going to beat around the bush with this anymore. Let's get right to it, because i got a lot to show you. All right, so here's the watercolor canvas I decided to paint on. Now this is Master's Touch, distributed by Hobby Lobby, okay? What intrigued me about it is I thought this was a really nicely done gallery wrap. As you can see here on the edge, and a very uh, sturdy double stretcher kind of situation on the inside. And only $4.99. That's pretty neat. Uh, it has a very smooth surface. Even though it's a canvas uh, texture, it's not very pronounced. And one of the things that's kept me from doing much on watercolor canvas in the past is very pronounced canvas texture. I bought some of this a while ago, this uh, Frederick's watercolor canvas, and this is just a tear off pad. They also have canvas panels and stretched canvas. But um, I never really liked it very much. I mean, it, it acts and works about like watercolor, like you would expect. But uh, it's the canvas uh, texture in it is very pronounced. And I didn't really like that. Something I liked a bit better was the aqua board. Um, this is a masonite panel. So this is a lot like uh, an oil painting panel but it's primed with the same stuff they prime this with, which is essentially an absorbent ground. Absorbent ground just lets hard, non-absorbent surfaces take watercolor better. Okay, so they've done the same thing here. Now, you can buy uh, absorbent ground and prime your own canvases if you want to. You don't have to buy a watercolor canvas. But I thought, I don't really want to go to that trouble. I really liked the way it had, you know, the gallery wrap already set up. It was only $4.99, and I thought, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, aside from that, I bought this about two years ago. I used it a little bit for testing once and put it away. I haven't used it since. So I, I paid more for this jar of absorbent ground than I did for this canvas, and it separated so bad and got so globby that it's almost become impossible to mix up again. Um, so you don't want to buy the absorbent ground to prime your own canvases unless you're going to use it pretty soon or within, I would say, a few months. And you're going to use it a lot. If you want to go this route, uh, I would suggest you buy some canvases and prime several of them, you know, and use this up. It at least the golden brand didn't have a very good shelf life. So anyway, that all leads me back to this and why I decided to to buy this. Uh, I've always liked the aqua board, but it's rougher. It has a more granular surface. So of everything I've seen, this was smoother. So I'm anxious to try this. Inexpensive, smooth, uh, nice gallery wrap. That was all the reason I chose that. All right, so what I've done is I've got a little composition drawn out here. And it's just going to be some trees and some cascading bushes and grasses down this way. Just something simple that I can try out this canvas with. And I'm just going to proceed normally as I would with uh, watercolor paper. Um, 
I'm going to do a lot of wet and wet washes and then we'll to begin with and we'll see what happens. Let's start out with some some water down here. I've tented the water a little bit. And if it drips to the bottom, that's that's fine. I actually want it to do that. Obviously, since it's it's a non-absorbent can canvas and not paper, you don't have to saturate the paper. You just have to to get it, you know, decide where you want it wet and where you don't. And um, it does seem to drip a little easier to the bottom than it would if it were paper. Now you see how lively that bl that bleed was? That's because I'm using core. I'm using core watercolor today. Core has a much livelier jump, you know, when you're when you're putting in at least some of the colors do when you're putting in the wet and wet washes. Just thought I'd mention that. That's really not having anything to do with the canvas. The fact that I'm using canvas. And obviously, if you wanted this not to to dart down to the bottom so quick, you could do these washes on level ground. So, using a three quarter inch silver black velvet uh, oval wash. Now, one of the cool things about canvas is uh, it will stain somewhat, but um, you have much more lifting capability than you do with ordinary watercolor paper. And that's one of the things I'm gonna try to make strong use of here. I have a dry brush in my other hand, just trying to keep some of this from not going. It really drips down to the bottom much more readily than paper. Paper tends to hold washes, the edges of washes. That's okay. I, I wanted something fairly wishy-washy and expressive anyway. So you just want to keep in mind when you're using canvas like this, everything sits on top. I mean, everything. That's why the water, as you dab it in, builds up so much more quickly. Okay, it's still not dry, but I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing here. Um, I think it's dry enough that the uh, wet and wet movement has slowed. So I'm, I'm still taking advantage of, of some of the wet and wet. It's, it's not going to run down to the bottom now. So I'm trying to model some of these bushes and grasses. And I don't want to get it too wet because I don't want a whole lot more dripping. Like you can see over here, it's dry already. And that's fine. Um, I like having the, the contrast of the wet and the hard edge. You know, I've said it before in many of my demos. You take what watercolor is giving you and you, you make something out of it. That's so important. It's getting into the mind of watercolor, seeing what it's giving you, and work with it. That, uh, to me, is the most exciting thing about watercolor. It's how it partners with you. If you let it, if you work with it, you work with its strengths. Okay, now here's what I think is one of the cool things about canvas and this also goes for you know the ampersand board the aqua board or yuppo yuppo is a whole different yuppo or yuppo it's a plastic paper any uh of the non-absorbent watercolor papers um is that you can lift and i'm using a scrubber you can scrub pretty much to your heart's content and you won't hurt it 
So I'm just scrubbing in. I'm probably going to go back with some color. I'm just scrubbing in some little leaf shapes. Here and there. And you can scrub almost, not quite, but almost back to white. It depends somewhat on the staining characteristics of your paint, but... I'm going to go back to where I have some of these bush shapes using a, a little bitty fan brush. And just uh, start detailing out some of these uh, bush clumps. I'm just smearing with my finger. Seems to be very effective here on canvas. You could get a bristle brush and do that too if you wanted. Um, it just seems to work better with your, my finger, uh, especially on this canvas because of the tooth that's there. This is a Rosemary Series 33, number eight round. I won't be putting a link down to this. Just do rosemary.com and you'll find their brushes. Um, they're not sold on Amazon, which is usually the where I like to put links to. But this is a Kalinsky Sable, again, Series 33. Since I know some of you are going to ask if I don't say it. What I'm using here is some phthalo green, some sap green, and then I'm knocking it back with a little bit of uh, quinacridone red to make it a little more olive color. I'm going to start adding some shadow now to light source coming this way starts adding some shadow to the side of the trees painting on canvas offers you a lot of adjustment potential and i like that And I'm just negative painting down into these this bush line here. You know, and it's it's this is one of those things where you could noodle it and detail it. Um all the live long day and just you know eventually come to a point where you've overdone it. And canvas seems to oh, muddy up a little bit quicker because everything sits on top. You know, you don't have, I think, some of the transparency in places. So again, that's a function of layering, overdoing the layering. And I have to watch that because I am a chronic layer. I love to layer and glaze. So I can see in places where I've done it, it's getting kind of dead. I think what I want to do now is just get some 
some rigor work in there just for some final touches and see where I stand. So let's do that. Remember when you load a rigger to load it all the way up to the hilt and it'll give you a nice consistent line over a lot of painting. Just using some red oxide and a little quinacridone red trying to get a very rusty With some grassy things going on, maybe a little bit of branch work, maybe. Wherever you get nice little contrast areas, um, you know, you can kind of play up into them with some detail. Detail in watercolor is, I like to keep it to the edges as much as possible and let the solid areas, you know, kind of play within the washes rather than detail every square inch with grass and, and texture. You know, these washes are beautiful, and if you leave your your detail to the edges as much as possible, I think it's it's really beautiful. I'm going to lift here, see if I can get a little more transparency in here. That's looking dead. And I can pull out some of that. The negative paint down into that layer. And get a little bit more luminosity here. Take advantage of the lifting capabilities here. I like that. That's working. I think I'm going to let that be. It's kind of an odd little composition, but it was fun to just kind of let watercolor play and do its thing and experiment with the canvas. It's got a lot of great traits and it's really fun to paint on. Uh, everything sits on the surface a lot more and you know the more water you use the more of a mess you're going to tend to make. So in the beginning you can do a lot of wet and wet. Uh, keep your, your washes fresh but after that you're going to have to paint drier and drier and drier. Go ahead and use the strength of the canvas to to do lifting and manipulating of the paint a little bit but be careful not to overwork it it's very easy well thanks everyone for joining me i had a blast painting this hope you had fun watching thank you so much patrons you guys have been incredible make sure you're checking out your extra content i just uploaded another sketchbook peaks video yesterday so look for that and hopefully next week We'll have uh, video extras for the video extras level and hopefully in a week I'm going to have a paint notes coming out. So that's for you patrons. Thanks everyone for joining me. We'll see you all next time.